Good day students of year 11. Today's lesson will be on how to attempt questions on comprehension passages. If you glance through your O-level paper, you will note that there are quite a few comprehension passages. You may have short comprehension passages like test 5 in the 2015 paper, which is based on text passages. Test 7 for the last five years has been based on comprehension passages and carries seven marks. You may even get a comprehension passage on an excerpt from a dictionary like the test 11 in the 2015 paper. You will also have longer comprehension tasks. Look at test 15 of one of the past papers in the last five years. Comprehension means understanding or mentally grasping the meaning of something. The answer to a comprehension question usually is something you can point to in the paragraph or passage. Therefore, questions for comprehension passages aim at identifying whether you have understood the passage given. You may get different kinds of questions. You may get factual questions. This is the most straightforward type of question. Such questions focus on obvious details from the passage. Students are required to simply find these obvious details to answer. Under this category, you will have questions like, what did Kamala bring to class? Or, where was Sahan in the afternoon? You may also get questions that require inference. These questions are less direct compared to factual questions. They require the students to think like detectives and look for clues instead of obvious answers in the text. For instance, looking at the phrase, the sun was directly above their heads, the students should be able to understand that it was noontime. Let's look at some examples. Why did Sarojini help the old man? Pick out a phrase in the passage that tells us that Mahasin was angry. If you noticed, both these questions expect you to come to a conclusion based on reasoning. Sequencing is yet another type of question that you may come across. The type of question requires students to figure out the order in which events happened in a story. However, this question is not asking which event appeared first. An event that appeared in the first paragraph may not have happened first. Let's look at an example. Sam realized he left his wallet at home. It was the interval. The teacher offered a sandwich to Sam. Let's put this in order, shall we? The most common type of question is true or false. For these questions, students have to identify whether a given statement is entirely true or if a false detail is given. As examples, Trees are green in colour. That's true. Cars have four wheels. True. Candy is the capital of Sri Lanka. False. Cause and effect. These questions ask students to identify the cause, what made something happen, and effects, what happened as a result of the cause. A useful tip to write is because on top of the clause column and so in the effect column. When the two are strung together, it helps them to understand the question requirement more clearly. The next type of question is vocabulary in context. These questions basically test the student's vocabulary. However, do not forget that many words have multiple meanings. Identify the correct usage of the words based on the way they are used in the passage. That's why it's called in context. 
you may be asked to write the meaning or of or list out synonyms of given words or phrases. Let's look at some examples. Write down the meanings of the following. Ancient, belonging to the distant past or no longer in existence. Let's look at a synonym for the following. Important, powerful, significant. Another type of question is the applied vocabulary question. Different from the vocabulary in context questions, these questions are usually tougher as it requires the students to analyze and use their own words to describe a situation or characters accurately. For example, how would you describe the atmosphere in the classroom when the teacher stepped in? You can maybe say tensed, relaxed. Now that you have been introduced to different types of questions, let's look at a comprehension passage from your pupil's book. Let's turn to page 77 in your pupil's book, Unit 7, Activity 8. You would notice that the comprehension is a passage based on Mahatma Gandhi. The article motivates you to follow some of the principles he used when he was alive. Let's read it together, shall we? When we study the history of the world, we can see that many religious leaders, political leaders and social activists lived simple lives as minimalists. This quality attracted many disciples and followers around the world. Mahatma Gandhi is considered as the father of the nation by the Indians. He was an inspiring philosopher and a leader who led a simple life. Gandhi was actually born into an affluent family and had a very privileged upbringing. Gandhi accumulated little, ate the amount he needed to eat, dressed simply and led a simple stress-free life. He was a man who believed in being non-possessive and didn't even own a house. When Gandhi died, he had less than 10 personal possessions including a watch, a pair of spectacles, a pair of sandals and his eating bowl. Although some considered him to have died a pauper, he influenced the lives of many. Even today, his way of life continues to inspire many others around the world. However, at present, it is believed to be difficult to minimize the living conditions to such an extent. One must learn to use, buy or do things that they really ought to do rather than doing them just because the others do. Life becomes easy when one learns to reuse, recycle and give things away. Self-sufficiency also is a good trait of a person who leads a simple life. If one can manage his own work, such as painting one's room, clearing the garden or mending a shoe, etc., it makes life easier. In addition, if one is in the habit of growing fruits and vegetables for one's own consumption, that person saves a lot of money for a worthy cause. A person who leads a simple life is stress-free and has the opportunity to live a life that is inspired or inspiring. Now that we have read the article, let's first look for some words that you may have found difficult to understand. Who is a minimalist? A minimalist is someone who inspires others to journey towards a simple life. Minimalists own less and live more. From the passage, we understand that Mahatma Gandhi had very few possessions and influenced people to lead a simple life. We are also told that he had a privileged upbringing. What do you think is meant by this? This means that he was wealthy or came from a family that had lots of money. So his way of life was actually chosen by him. We also come across the word accumulated. We are informed that Gandhi accumulated little. This means that he collected or gathered a few possessions. Then we are told that he was non-possessive. That means that he did not have the desire to own anything. The article states 
that some people thought he died a pauper. What does pauper mean? Pauper means a very poor person. We are advised by the writer of the article to be self-sufficient. In other words, to be self-sufficient means to be independent and having the ability to look after yourself well. I'm sure you enjoyed reading this article with me. Let's look at the questions that follow. Question number one. State whether the following are true or false according to the text. So this is a true or false question. Minimalists live a simple life. That's true, isn't it? Mahatma Gandhi was born into a poor family. No, this is false. We are told that he was born to an affluent family. Gandhi had only 10 things of his own when he died. This is a tricky question because actually we are told in the text that he had less than 10 personal possessions when he died. So it's false. Self-sufficiency is a trait of simple life. It is a trait of simple life. So this is true. Moving on, let's look at question number two. It's a question that will test applied vocabulary. Find similar meanings or words, phrases from the text from the following. Wealthy, affluent, collected, accumulated, gains, has the opportunity. Question number three is also a question on vocabulary. You are asked to find the opposites of the words given. Easy, difficult, complex, easy, maximize, minimize. The fourth question expects you to give a suitable title. This question requires your inference. How about the simple life of a great man? Question five. What are the good practices of a simple lifestyle? Discuss and list them out. So, for this factual question, let's write them all down. Learn to recycle, reuse and give things away. Be self-sufficient by doing your work, your own work. Grow your own fruits and vegetables, which will help you to save money for a worthy cause. And the final question, write a speech on the value of leading a simple life and present it to the class. I am sure you can do this by yourself as you have so many points that you can include. I'm sure the pictures on screen gave you some ideas too. We will be doing speech writing in a separate lesson, so do remember to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for participating in our lesson today. We will be doing more on comprehensions in the lessons to follow. Have a wonderful day.